Humans have always had deep connections with colors. It's weird how the right combination of colors can hit you emotionally. Did you know that there is a whole field of psychology dedicated just to study the effects of colors on humans? Color psychology is used in branding and marketing at a level that people like you and me can only imagine. Ever wondered why the notifications are red? Or how all the popular fast food chains seem to have pretty much the same color scheme, which also, surprise surprise, is the same as all the social media apps. Colors are so powerful that they can get people's attention within seconds and create a magical sense of connection. And the people won't even know that it is happening. Clearly, color psychology plays a big role in our social media and internet usage. So, on the recommendation of a former Google design ethicist, Tristan Harris, I wanted to see how my life would be like if I just grayscaled my phone and my laptop for a week. And here's how it went. So, it's the first day of me turning my phone and laptop grayscale challenge. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should shorten it a bit, but Anyway, so I just looked up how to grayscale my phone and here we go. Okay, what the hell? Oh shit. These are all of my apps. Just wow. This is how Amazon Prime is looking right now. This is Instagram. It feels like a weird monochrome feed but yeah i don't know so for the laptop you go in settings ease of access color filters and then you turn on color filter uh yeah i think that's it let's see i have to say that this was weird I could not enjoy the YouTube videos as much as I normally would have. I hadn't realized it up till now, but every creator has a specific color vibe for a lack of a better word. I don't know how else to describe it, but it is part of the viewing experience. So after that sorry state of affairs, I started studying and I thought to myself it's a good thing that books are black and white. But shit. I spoke too soon and that is my face when I realized that I cannot highlight because all the highlighter colors are grey now. And that's just me ranting about my intricate highlighting system and how I cannot do that now. Yeah well Sanika, life is tough, you have to get over it. <laughs> Such first world problems I tell you. What do you think a new comic? Okay, watching the Big Bang Theory in black and white wasn't the best thing ever, but it wasn't too bad. It looked like a 50s comedy show, but because of the black and white thing, it had like an eerie undertone. It was fun. My stomach hurts, man. Filling me up with all this negative energy and shit. Like, I don't even know. So, I'm having a good day so far. I did a black and white workout and then i stretched and then i did a black and white meditation but thankfully my eyes were closed so i could not see that and now i'm actually reading a research paper for this video and i have to work with black and white color wheels Time and grind, take your time, tripping over space and time, my mind and line, spinning like a god of time, my modest mind, speaking from a heart of kind, a way to find another way to pass the time, I made my mind a station, kind of race, yeah, running, running, got me gunning, gunning, whole school cat, kept it stunning, stunning, funny how the rest won't come in, come in, yeah, funny how you back for loving, loving, I got one too many tricks on my sleeve, I mustn't leave, overdose of empathy, my pops and me, more screenshots. In the introduction of my video, I may have bashed the color psychology thing a bit too much. I made it sound like it is one of the weapons used by these big tech companies to manipulate us into spending more and more and more, more time and more money on their websites and products and services. And don't get me wrong, I still am 
kind of saying that especially if you are to believe the netflix documentary social media social network social dilemma if you are to believe social dilemma then yes they are manipulating us at a really large scale and color psychology could be one of their weapons but there's no point in demonizing something because nothing is evil in itself it is because of color psychology that we are able to enjoy videos of peter mckinnon or irfan junejo this is the reason why youtubers and filmmakers spend hours and hours color creating their videos they are also trying to manipulate us in a way but this is good manipulation that will make you feel more connected to the video emotionally so yeah the point that i'm trying to make is don't demonize anything everything depends on how it is being used so i'm trying to decide what i want to order for lunch and usually i order based on what looks appetizing but right now none of this looks appetizing so <laughs> i don't know at this point why i'm doing this but theek hai chalo ye bhi kar lete hai i've just decided to be on a safer side so i ordered paneer crispy and veg manja soup and now i'm watching the kissing booth 3 judging from the first two parts it's kind of a stupid movie and i'm watching it in black and white making it even stupider actually i take my words back it wasn't as bad as the first two parts and i think there were some pretty cool shots in the film which i wouldn't know anything about because i was watching it in grey and by the way my food was amazing So finally it is the last day of my challenge. Let's see. Is it weird that I want to turn it back off? This is just too much. This is too much for me right now. I'm turning it back off. Now I thought I'd say this but the gray scale it just feels more comfortable now. Okay, so that was unexpected. But anyway, so let's talk about my experience throughout this week. So firstly, I did not do online shopping at all this week. One of my favorite pastimes is just to go online and do window shopping which often leads to actual shopping, but I did not do any of that this week because everything was just so blah. But my bank account is really happy about that. The next thing is notifications and I didn't notice it as much because I have turned off all of my notifications anyway so I don't get those red bubbles on the top of my apps but the few places that you get the red symbol such as um YouTube notifications or when you get a new mail it didn't excite me as much my Instagram scrolling was also pretty limited this week and another unexpected side effect was that my eyes don't hurt as much at the end of the day now i followed this gray scale thing pretty seriously i did not turn it off at all even once on my phone and i only turned it off when i was editing my videos on my laptop because come on i mean i'm not doing it in gray that that would have been just stupid for the sake of the video and to get the full effect of it i just went a little overboard you don't need to do that in your life like it's fine if you're using color mode when you're ordering food or when you have to highlight something in your book that's totally okay as i've said before the purpose of this video is not to demonize anything everything can be used for good and bad it really depends on how you're using it i think my biggest take away from this challenge was i should be a little more mindful a little more conscious when i'm making decisions in the space of social media and internet usage in general for example if you are clicking on a thumbnail what is it exactly 
about that video that you want to watch or were you just automatically attracted by the bright colors of the thumbnail and your primate brain just took over and you just subconsciously without thinking clicked on it let's be honest that has happened with all of us do i think that this is the solution for your phone addiction no of course not but i do think that this can be a step in making us more mindful users also another problem with this is that human beings are really flexible for example i did say that it did reduce my instagram scrolling but compared to day 1 i was way more comfortable using my instagram on day 7 So maybe after a week or so I would have just completely gotten used to using my Instagram in grey and just fallen back into all of my habits. So if someone really wants to procrastinate if someone is really addicted to their phone then this is not going to be the thing that is going to stop them. According to me if somebody is addicted to their phone there are two components to it. The first component is all the external factors. So these are all the tactics that are being used by these tech companies the algorithm or the slot machine effect where on every refresh you get something new or color psychology this is also a part of it the second component is internal so what is it about your life that you are getting addicted to social media is your life so boring that you are trying to find entertainment from these things are you running away from something are you scared of something do you have any exam coming up and you are using this as a coping mechanism there are many different things that can happen but it is completely subjective to you so you just have to sit down and introspect and figure these things out for yourself the external components can be tackled in some ways such as grayscaling your phone or you can lock your phone for certain hours during the day but these things are not sustainable and they won't work in the long run if you are not willing to take care of your internal components So in conclusion grayscaling my phone it did make me a little more mindful in terms of my content consumption but i don't think this is a good permanent long term solution but don't just listen to me try it for yourself try it for a week or try it for a day actually and then just come back at the end of the day and tell me how your experience was in the comments below and that's it i will see you next week bye